One of my uh, Mason Vogger friends, TB1 on Rudy, you probably know him, uh, Aussie guy, he wanted to know what I thought of the Speed Triple since I've been riding it out here. Um, so yeah, he wanted to have a quick walk around of it. I mean, I, I mean, I love the look of the bike. Um, more so that I've seen it in the flesh now. And uh, this is not the Speed Triple R, it's uh, just the Speed Triple 1050. It's the ABS version, so it's from 2013 onwards, I think, or 2012 onwards. And yeah, I mean, it's got pretty... Design's pretty cool. Um, dual exhaust on the back. I don't think these... I think these are standard, not aftermarket, because I can't see any writing on it. Single-sided swim arm, swing arm. I mean, the best part is probably the... Yeah, it is the sound of it. That triple sound. So I should give a couple of caveats, actually, when reviewing this. Is that, um, is that I've been riding for under a year. And uh, this is my first litre bike that I've ridden. So it's pretty difficult for me to compare. I haven't ridden any super sport bikes either. So take whatever I say with a pinch of salt, really. But I've now been riding this for three days in Finland. I, I rented it from a dealership. Initial thoughts? If you like the sound of triples, you'll never ever get bored of this bike, I don't think. I mean, it's great to listen to at idle, it's great to listen to when you crank it up. You know, that, that, you know the whistle is always there in some form or another. It's got a pretty nice uh, wide rear tyre as well, so it makes turning really easy. So on back roads in Finland, these are just all easy as pie. I mean, I found, I mean, this has got about 130 horsepower or something like that. And I found it very manageable, the power. I mean, I haven't found it scary at all. I mean, all that you need to do is, is just uh, move it up a gear if you find it's too torquey. And then uh, you sort of take, you've taken most of the edge off it. And in terms of improving my technique, I found this is, is really great because the you c it can pull pretty much anywhere from about two, two and a half thousand RPM. Well, I mean, the and the red line on this is, what is it? 11,000 RPM. I mean, I'm, I rarely go up to the top because there's no need. So these are the roads that I've been pretty much riding on for these past few days. I mean, I've read a few things about uh, what people have said about uh, Triumphs is that the gearbox can be a bit clunky. Yeah, some, some gearboxes may be clunkier than others, but uh, I think it's really just down to the rider themselves not shifting properly. I mean, I found it initially, but as I've actually sort of understood the, uh, sort of got used to it in these part, in the past sort of thousand kilometers, I've, I'm able to rev match much better than I did on the first day. I mean, this bike has actually changed my outlook in terms of what I'd actually consider my next bike. I mean, I would actually prefer now to get a litre bike rather than moving to a 600 Super Sport. I mean, I'm currently on a KTM 690 Duke, which is pretty upright. This, I mean, I think is still considered a reasonably upright bike, but, well, it's a lot more tucked in than, than my KTM was, or my KTM is. I haven't crashed it. I mean, I haven't found the suspension hard at all. I mean, this road is this road is a bit abnormal actually for a finished road. Most finished roads are actually kept in pretty good condition. I mean, on this is I didn't really doesn't really bother my wrists at all. I mean, if anything, having a bit of a shitty road is better for learning technique. I uh, can't remember what the weight is on this bike, but it feels really easy to lean from side to side. Um, as you've noticed, there's probably no. There's no screen on this. I think you can get sort of some kind of little silly screen for it, but uh, oh, that's a bit bad. But uh, yeah, on the motorway, yeah, it does get a bit tiring. Yeah, I rode about an hour and a half on the motorway, and yeah, my it does go. It does make your neck a bit tight from the wind blast. But anything, um, anything which is around. Uh, 
100 kilometers an hour is, is quite easy riding. And what's really great about these roads is, is that even though they're twisty, turny, hilly, up, down, is that you can quite easily stay in one gear. There is always power and torque where you need it. It makes it easy riding. So, I mean, this, if I had, if I had to choose a bike again to go touring on, I mean, I would, I would look quite long and hard at this. It's still got that sportiness to it, you know, if you're riding on roads and you're not going on gravel tracks, I mean, I can't really see the point of getting something quite adventurous. I mean, I want something, I want something fun as well. So, if you're looking for something which is a sort of a happy medium between what I'd call sort of touring and a fun, sporty bike, then I'd say this, this does fit the bill pretty well. And the little bits that I've ridden in the city as well. Um, yeah, it's easy there as well if you keep it in second gear. I mean, first gear, yeah, if you sort of accidentally slip it a bit, slip your wrist a bit, it's, uh, it's gonna kick. I mean, I haven't found that I've been doing any accidental wheelies on this, so <laughs> read into that whatever you want, whatever you may. I love triples, so I'm a little biased, I would say, on that. I mean, I would seriously consider buying this bike. If Triumph made this 1050 engine in a, in a sport bike shell, I would that would be pretty high on my list of wanting to buy but um, because I haven't, I haven't actually ridden a sport bike yet or I haven't actually owned one yet I mean that's where I'm going for my next bike but um, I would seriously consider owning one of these it's a good it's a great all-round bike oh yeah brakes I haven't mentioned brakes uh, brakes are I usually judge brakes at least for me personally is by how many fingers I can use and I'm not like Smo. Smo usually uses the uh, he always has one finger riding on his brake. I can use, for sort of light braking, I use just a single finger, my middle finger, and then anything harder, then I just sort of, my index finger goes and grabs it well, as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's Brembo's all round. ABS is included, which is pretty important, I think, especially if you're in rainier climbs. I've had a lot of fun riding this, and anybody else, if you're looking, if you're looking to buy this bike, I mean, you'll have a whole bunch of fun riding it as well. I mean, I have not, gotten tired of riding this for three four days straight and I would keep on riding it if I had it for the rest of the time that I'm here. So if you want a conclusion, well it's really smooth power delivery, no surprises, you know triples are naturally quite smooth as bikes, you know they there's virtually no vibration that I can feel anywhere. The noise is great, I'm about six foot two in height and you know now that I've gotten used to where all the levers, brakes, shifters and everything is, is that I feel quite at home on this now. And I've ridden this bike for 12 hours in a day, about 450 kilometers. And I wasn't at all physically tired from it. And I also like to judge bikes by, you know, how they actually make the rider feel. You know, I, you know, I feel great riding this bike, you know, just from the way it looks, how it sounds and yeah. So I give it a I give it a double thumbs up. Um, I haven't ridden it long enough to tell you really what I don't like. And I'm not, I can't say I'm a good enough rider yet to give you those sort of those finer points. But if you've got any more detailed questions or whatever specific questions that I haven't really answered, give me a shout in the comments below, and I'll I'll do the best that I can to answer them. But uh, if you do go ahead and get this bike, you'll. I think you'll definitely enjoy it. Anyways, see you later. I'm going to carry on riding. Mm -hmm.